Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to our Sunday School lesson this morning. Martha's in the other room getting ready for crafts, so you'll see her in a little while. So I'll start the lesson today, and then we'll go to a video, and then we'll end with uh, Martha and her craft. Our lesson today is called The Church Grows, but it's really about a man named Paul, and him wanting to become a disciple of Jesus and a follower of Jesus. But the other disciples weren't so sure about that. Uh, Paul had earlier in his life been a prosecutor of Christians, uh, and had uh, pr prosecuted them for practicing their faith. And so naturally they were kind of mistrustful, uh, distrustful of, uh, of Paul and his intentions. But the story today is going to talk about how uh, a man named Barnabas brought um, uh, uh, Paul to the disciples and was able to convince the disciples to uh, uh, accept Paul for what he was and he did believe in Jesus. And so our story is not only going to be about Paul becoming a disciple, but it's also about the power of love and us accepting others for what they are, boys and girls, not necessarily for what we see them as. We all make judgments all the time about other things that we like and don't like, but sometimes those judgments are not necessarily accurate. Sometimes we'll have a friend who we don't like initially, and it turns out they become one of our best friends. Uh, sometimes we don't, want to, we don't want to do something, and then we find out that we really like doing that. I, do, I, I like that with movies. I sometimes won't want to go see a movie, and then I find out I like the movie a lot. It's something that we all do, boys and girls, and it's a lesson that we all need to learn that just don't accept uh, others uh, on the first look. Sometimes a little love and taking a little deeper look will make us realize that they are important people and can be important people in our lives. And that's what our story is going to be about today as we get into discussing Paul. Um, so let's go to our story and, uh, and then we'll go to the video. Uh, the story, once again, will be coming from our Celebration Wonder Bible book. Uh, it is called The Church Grows, and the Bible verse it references is Acts 9, verses 26 through 31. So if you want to look that up and read the actual verses, boys and girls, it's going to be in Acts 9, verses 26 through 31. Paul arrived in Jerusalem. He tried to join the disciples, who were Jesus' friends, but they were afraid of him. The disciples did not believe that Paul had really become a follower of Jesus. And remember, boys and girls, that he had been someone who had prosecuted Christians uh, earlier in his life. Uh, so they had good reason not to trust him. But Barnabas knew that Paul loved Jesus, so he brought Paul to the disciples. Barnabas told the believers Paul's story. Barnabas told the believers that Paul could be trusted. Sometimes it helps when a friend tells us that they can trust another person, doesn't it, boys and girls? After this, Paul was able to work with the disciples to tell others about Jesus. Because Paul, the disciples, and all the followers of Jesus told everyone about Jesus' life and love, and the church grew. Paul became an important part of our church, boys and girls. He helped the church grow uh, during his lifetime and helped make the church uh, be what it is today, the church that you go to Sunday school in and the church that your parents attend. So uh, even though the disciples had a, a initial uh, mistrust of Paul because of Barnabas and because they accepted and loved Paul, uh, he became an important part of Jesus' disciples and an important part of our church. So that's our lesson today, boys and girls. Let's go on to the video, and then Martha will be back in a second with your craft. Hi, everyone. It's Carly. Have you ever met someone who you weren't sure about being friends with? One time, a new kid joined my class from a different classroom. We'd heard about him, and he was kind of mean. We didn't want him to hang out with us. Honestly, we were a little nervous. One day, our friend, Rebecca, said that we should give him a chance. Rebecca met him at recess and said that he seemed nice. She said that we should try to get to know him. When we did, we realized that he must have changed because he was awesome. Our Bible story teaches us that sometimes love is giving someone another chance. In our story today, Paul, who is also known as Saul, is trying to be accepted by the people who follow Jesus. The problem is, Paul was known for doing a lot of bad things, but now he really just wanted to serve like Jesus. Barnabas went to the community and told them that Paul had changed. Though the people didn't trust Paul yet, they trusted Barnabas and gave Paul a chance. Barnabas shows love by speaking up for Paul so that Paul could help and serve. Just like my friend Rebecca, Barnabas helped the community see that people change. A second chance may be what someone needs to show they've changed and can do good. Sometimes we have to speak up for others too. 
People around you may not agree with you or accept what you're saying, but that doesn't mean you don't try. We have chances to show love by speaking up for others. When we love, we give everyone a chance. Now it's your turn to wonder. So today we're talking about how we might meet somebody one time and think, oh, I don't, I don't know that I like them. And then maybe later on you find out you do like them. We're talking about how sometimes we need to take a second look at things. One of my best friends told me when she first met me, she didn't like me much. But now we've been friends for, gosh, 25 years, I think. Isn't that amazing? So that's one of the things that we as Christians do. We give people a second chance. We open our eyes and try to see things differently, try to see things with love. And that's important to understanding people and to care about people is to look twice, not just once and decide, oh, I don't like that person, but maybe see if we can look at them another way and understand them and then see if we can like that person. And that's what the church does. It brings us all together to get to know one another and enjoy one another. And so sometimes at church, we have to have a, a, second, a second look at things. So today we're going to look at some what's called optical illusions. You see this one? What do you see in that picture? Well, the first thing I saw was, you know, kind of looks like maybe it's a, a vase of some kind or a cup, maybe a, a chalice of some kind. But then look at the white parts. What do you see if you look just at the white parts? Do you see a person? Do you see a person here and a person there? It looks like they're talking to each other. Isn't that fun, what we first see, and then if we look again, what we see? That's how it is as Christians. Here's another one. So when you first look at that, I don't know, the first time I looked at it, I saw one animal, and then the first time Ken looked at it, he saw another animal. Do you see two different animals in that picture? The first animal I saw was uh, around like this, and here's the eye, and here's the ears. It's a rabbit when I first looked at it. But when Ken looked at it, the first thing he saw was here's the head, here's the eyes, and here's the bill. He said it's a duck or a bird. Isn't that interesting how you can look at one picture and see two different animals in that one picture? So we want to always look twice. We want to give things another chance and to see. Now this one gets a little more complicated. Can you see this one? They say there's nine faces in that picture and that one of them is a dog. Can you see nine faces? At first I just saw this one big face. Did you see that too? It looks like an old man with a bald head and maybe some long hair back here. But if you look closer, you can see over here, that's actually a woman and that's her skirt. Do you see her? And what's she holding? She's holding a baby. And then over here, do you see an, another person? He's got a face too. Isn't that amazing? And look up here. There's actually a face up there. And then look, do you see the dog in the picture? Ken thought this was a hand, but look closer. There's actually a dog there sleeping. Isn't that amazing when you look close and when you look far away, how you can see different things. Let's do one more. Huh, what do you see in this picture? Well, the first thing I saw, it looks like an old woman, maybe an Indian woman or a Native American woman or a Mexican woman or I don't know. And then over here I saw an older man, again with a bald head. But if you look closer, do you see someone playing the guitar? And do you see someone dancing? Yeah, when I look closer, all of a sudden I realize, no, there's a man here playing the guitar. There's a woman here who's dancing. And look, there's a person over here in the door, isn't there? 
Isn't that amazing how when we stop to take another look, sometimes things look differently than we first checked them out. Sometimes we learn that, oh, I do like that person after all. Sometimes I learn that a relationship that I didn't think was going to be very good turns out to be just great. So that's one of the things that we learn as Christians is to be open-minded, open-hearted, take another look, and accept people for who they are. I hope you have a great week. This is our last week with you this year. Next Sunday, you can actually come to the church and Mr. Bob and Mr. Tim will be there to see you. And so that will be a lot of fun to get to go back to the church, won't it? So we'll see you later. Hopefully we'll see you at the church. Bye. Your voice is everywhere In pictures and songs that hang in the air To show us the way you love And we sing along and you're teaching us by you Wash our feet The grave Say